All right. So today I'm going to talk to you about this here. Walking. Walking in virtual reality. Let's look at the first user of our system. Oh man, should practice more. All right. As you can see, this user is moving back and forth a lot while playing this Batman application, right? So really like going to the, to the net to play a stop ball, going back and forth. So it uses a lot of space. In fact, it, it's 16 square meters. Okay. Let's look at another user of our system. She's currently playing whack a mole and also uses a lot of space. And the important fact here is that they share the same tracking volume. And in fact, not only those two, but it's four users who share the same 16 square meters. <coughs> All right. All the while, I think they're alone in the tracking volume. So the Batman user plays alone, Rackamon users all alone, Space Invaders also, and Pac-Man. So why are we doing this? Um, we think that the most expensive factor for virtual reality today is in fact not the technology, it is space. And there are two approaches to um, solve the problem. The first approach is to not use space at all, to just buy a treadmill. I have techniques such as walking in place or instant teleportation. And those techniques are great, but they're not as immersive as real walking. And real walking is basically the direct mapping between virtual, between physical and virtual motion. The second approach is to reduce space demand. There are a lot of space compression techniques uh, redirected walking being uh, among um, the most popular. Um, basically change that motion mapping only unperceivably. So you still have like a real walking sensation, but you use less space. However, this applies only to lab scale VR, and not to consumer scale. So and this is where virtual space comes in. Virtual space is a software system that overloads multiple users into the same physical space. And um, unlike other projects, this works for consumer scale. So we basically reduce um, the, the individual demand from 16 square meters to four. How does our system work? In the beginning, we assign each application, each user, a tile. And we keep the user on the tile by placing rewards. For example, we play the shuttlecock always into that corner of the, of the court. But after a while, users will feel confined. And this is why we move all users synchronously. So by placing a stop ball right in front of the net, or by moving the barrier in Space Invaders, place a mole somewhere else, or put a cherry somewhere. And this happens now, and all users move. And we call this a maneuver, which is basically a synchronized movement of users in virtual space. Um, this is not how we started. So um, and we wanted to use us to share the same tracking volume. And what we be uh, start started doing in the beginning was that we actually um, tried to prevent collisions. So we extrapolated the movement, um, had like some sort of prediction system, and um, uh, which gave us like warnings of like imminent collisions. And then we place an incentive, like a reward or an obstacle. And um, the problem is, this is not very fast. So it can also be sure, like, something will happen in two seconds, and that's not enough time to give a user a reward he or she notices. So instead, we orchestrate walking. And this is basically a more strategic approach. So virtual space does not prevent collisions actively, but orchestrates walking, and thus prevents collisions by design. Okay, this basically replaces our problem. So before we had the problem of detecting a collision to prevent 
collisions. Um, now we need to orchestrate movement. And how do we do that now? So this is the real-time output of the system. And as you can see, basically each user always has a tile which is assigned to, uh, to the user. So, and we borrow from the concept of keyframes, so if like one keyframe, we want to get to the next keyframe somehow, and we just animate in between. Uh, this way, a user has always some space to walk on. All right, and how do we keep the users? Basically, we add rewards, so we play a, sh play a shuttlecock, for example, here in badminton, or place a mall and make a mall, or we remove obstacles. So we place a chair over there, goes is removed, various free user goes there. All right, this works great, but only for slow movements. How what about fast movements? How about action sequences? And you also got it covered there. So um, imagine now the Batman user wants to engage in some sort of fast-paced rally. So once basically wants to traverse all over the court. Um, this would require more space. Basically the center of the tracking volume. And then we need to basically move all other users out of the way. And our system does exactly that. Now, and we call this a focus maneuver. So before you have seen the rotation maneuver, now we've seen the focus maneuver. So um, how do we decide which maneuver to perform? So basically we've seen the rotation and also the focus or defocus. There's also others like the stay maneuver, everybody stays in uh, the assigned tiles, or the switch, which is, which is basically a rotation with two users. So um, um, we start by apps um, evaluating um, the space they might get. So let's say the Batman user um, is in front of the net, then the stay maneuver would um, would let him like still be there, and we evaluate this someone with, with some sort of number, let's say 25. Um, now, if you want to have like uh, another man maneuver, this would lead to a different assigned tile, different space, which we can give a different rating. So for example, badminton once already played a bunch of uh, shuttles over there. Now we want to actually move the user, so we give this a higher valuation. And focus is, of course, always good to have this kind of fast-paced rally, so give this 100. So Pac-Man is slightly different. So you can see all the pellets are somehow in the upper left area, not in the other areas. So this is where the Pac-Man app wants, uh, his user, uh, wants his user to go to. So we evaluate this with like, even a higher number, say 120. So we have those valuations. And then we look at the maneuver history. So let's say we have a couple of rotations before, then a switch, and then a focus. And then look at the potential maneuvers to perform. So stay would give us an average value of 55, which is basically the value for the intended walking by the applications. And plus minus like a variance of say 18, which is basically uh, the fairness between apps. A rotation would lead to uh, a higher valuation, average valuation, and a focus even higher maybe. But we have this trade-off. We kind of want to maximize the average value but minimize uh, the variance in order to achieve high intended walking, and uh, also like a high amount of fairness. And this is why, say, we pick the, the, cl uh, the clockwise rotation. So, and now we just put that maneuver in a queue to be performed later. And this illustrates very well that how virtual space works. So it's like a software system that executes and plans in parallel. So the planning is done in parallel and the execution is done in parallel to achieve like an high, a high interaction rate. So we decided on maneuver, now the timing. So when evaluating, apps also give some sort of estimate how much time they need to perform that maneuver. So say uh, Batman wants like five second preparation time, so it needs to wait for like a full ball exchange, for, ex for example, and then one second execution time for the user to actually go from point A to point B. Batman, say, needs two and three seconds. Great, now we have those values, and also for the other two apps. Um, and now we just pick the maximum uh, preparation time and the maximum execution time, and there we go, five plus three. So uh, we can improve the interaction rate still, so we also have another option. Um, apps could give multiple possibilities. 
So let's say it's 3 plus 2 now. And then uh, the maximum value decreases. And also we can just give uh, a, linear, uh, a linear equation. So Pac-Man could say, well, I basically want this to happen within five seconds and don't care about the preparation execution time. And um, then we give this to a linear solver. And there we go. We optimize interaction rate even further. So this is basically how virtual space works. Now we have implemented some optimization, which I want to share with you. So uh, the first one, basically virtual space uh, sees every app as a sort of rhythm app. So it wants to get them in sync somehow. There are certain moments in time where we can influence a user's movement. For example, with a Batman, every time the enemy AI hits the shuttle somewhere. So we have two Batman apps, then we sort of want to synchronize those movements, and this is what virtual space does in the background. And this basically decreases our preparation time a lot, thus increasing, again, interaction rate. Uh, the second optimization is the initial placement. So Batman again. Uh, this, on the right side, you can see um, the spatial density distribution of uh, three minutes of gameplay. And you can see here that basically what users want is to somehow go back to the baseline, go to the center of the baseline, basically, because that's somehow the optimal position to be in. And so we, basically, we place, go ahead and place the first Batman app, just put it, put it in the room, and replace the second Batman app with a rotation offset of 180 degrees. So what we, want to, what we get there is like basically um, every app gets um, the tile it wants more often. And this is a good illustration of actually where the name comes from. So um, what virtual space does is basically how a memory management unit in an operating system works. So instead of like having physical memory, we have physical space. And this is basically the concept of virtual memory, virtual space. So all of this results in an API, which is, um, so don't bother too much with the, all the function calls here, but uh, this is basically the whole API uh, which apps can implement. We implemented, implemented those four applications, actually also some more, and um, they all work in parallel. Right, and it's developed in C Sharp and Unity. So um, we have two servers, run running virtual space, so deciding and timing maneuvers, and also tracking server, and this all gets streamed to um, um, our Samsung S6s, yeah, to be run in mobile VR. All right, we performed a user study for this. So um, we had 16 participants split in four groups, and in each group we ran all four apps I've shown you. I had two conditions. Basically, first we had like a, like a, like a static pre-allocation, so each user was assigned a tile. And in the second experimental condition, we moved those tiles around. So, and as you can see here quite easily, um, this is basically four times four meters, or our tracking volume. Virtual space lets users uh, cover more space or use more physical space. When asked, um, participants also felt way less confined in the virtual space condition. So this is the average rating of a simple questionnaire. All right, so in summary, we developed virtual space, which is a space management system, which, lets, which runs different apps and users in the same physical space and enables its users to share that physical space and thus reducing the overall space demand to four square meters per user. This reduces the cost of real walking and can be seen as on an alternative to related work and actually also as a complement to other space compression techniques. In case you want to try it out, here's our GitHub link. Feel free to make a photo now or ask me later. Um, yeah, also I want to especially thank my um, co-authors, Max, who is here somewhere. Max, where are you? That's the guy, he implemented a lot here. And also Pat, who sadly cannot be here today, but he says hello. And um, yeah, that's it. Thanks a lot for your attention. And uh, yeah, happy to ask, ask any questions.
Hi, great talk. Thank you. Uh, my name is Xiao Chen from Shopify. Um, so I just noticed that your so this experiment is actually for mobile VR, right? But then yes. in the example that you're giving here, it's actually the regular, um, I guess, position tracking head mounted VR. So have you thought about, I guess, how, how would this um, virtual space be applied to something that has wires on it? And like there could be people can be tripping on it, that kind of stuff. <laughs> Okay, it's not intended for that, to answer plainly. It's simply, well, it's like, it's for tetherless VR only. But yeah, I guess we could perform some of the maneuvers, but not all of them. Yeah, so I guess my question is, how, how would you, like, do you imagine this is something that can be applied in a different situation? All right. So we imagine uh, VR to be um, only mobile in the near future. So um, uh, I'd be interested to know what those other situations might be. Um, yeah. So this works for mobile VR only. Yeah. Uh, hi, Diane Watson, University of Waterloo. Um, so I'm really interested. So you had the perception of people's confinement that you looked at. Mm -hmm. Did you look at like how fair the game was being to them? Did people think that the game was cheating them or um, leading them, literally leading them around? Mm. Well, we asked also Another question which maybe relates here, it's uh, the question of enjoyment. <laughs> so um, virtual space got like higher average rating in terms of enjoyment, but we couldn't measure a significant difference here. Um, and this, I think, basically also like in includes that question somehow, maybe a little bit. Okay, thank you. So, yeah. Hi, Yang Gong Nama Ung University. Uh, my question was, um, in general, I would say that VR right now is quite isolating in itself. Mm -hmm. And you put four people co-located, yeah. and I would assume they're friends to a certain level, they play together. Have you explored the space? How can I actually maybe peek into what they're doing, where they are? Right, so we're right. not fully just isolated, but kind of co-located and play? All right. So this is, uh, you know, this is a... I was just presented a system, a system for space management, right? So uh, potentially, of course, it could also be used like for, for more social situations. We picked like the most extreme scenario where like nobody knows each other, but it's uh, uh, very imaginable. And also we kind of tried it out to like, also like cluster different groups of people. So like two people versus one versus one, for instance. Yeah. Thanks. Any more questions? Hi, I'm, I'm Jackie Young from Stanford University. And um, I, I really like the idea that you uh, put something to lure, like, lure the user mm -hmm. to another space so that they don't collide with each yes. other. But like, uh, have you considered uh, what if like, uh, when there is a ball going that way, but the user considered not to chase that ball? And uh, do you consider like, uh, what will happen if there is a collusion or something? Yes, so um, that happened. Um, so um, sometimes users didn't notice the incentive they were given. Um, and it's an open loop system. So this could be improved by making this some sort of like closed loop system, right? So many, like somehow measuring the perception of like whether they got that incentive or not. Yeah, they would definitely improve the system a little bit. Yeah, thanks. Okay. 